news tonight in Tegan Barbie, the government is to request supplies of an immune boosting drug from Cuba to help residents fight off COVID-19. The ECCB readjusting its growth predictions for the region as it braces for pending economic fallout. And the mostly empty pews on a Sunday in Antigua, the result of social distancing as fears continue over the coronavirus. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Uh, good evening, welcome to the ABS Evening News here on ABS Antigua's News Authority. I am Andy Lybird. Good evening. And that's how we begin this evening. The Gaston Brown administration is leading by example on social distancing, holding its latest cabinet meeting via video conference. Members of the executive continue to analyze and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic from their respective locations for just over two and a half hours on Sunday morning. And crucial decisions were made as the government seeks to further scale up the response to COVID-19. One of them is that the government will request supplies of interferon 2B from the Cuban government. The drug provides a boost to the immune system and is seen to be very helpful in the response to COVID-19. Now joining us on Skype this evening to talk a bit about the two and a half hour meeting is Minister of Information and Telecommunications, uh, the Honorable Melford Nicholas. Good evening, Mr. Minister. Good evening, Andy, and good evening to all of your viewers. Yeah, necessity in, is indeed the mother in, of invention. Well, yes, indeed. <laughs> all right, first of all, let's get straight to it. Um, the request for interferon uh, 2B from Cuba. Can you tell us a little bit more about this development? Well, uh, Andy, it follows on what the government has been doing, and we have been making preparation. Um, even before we had the uh, announcement of patient zero, that uh, we expected the, the virus to uh, get onto, onto our shores. And so what we have been doing is a steady state of preparation. Uh, today's meeting uh, was uh, a move in the right direction in the sense that it allowed us to be able to practice some of what we are preaching as well in terms of social distancing. And so the opportunity came along for us to do that. It's a precursor to what's going to happen because in another few short weeks and perhaps maybe even days, we will be uh, embarking our own e-portal for the cabinet as well. So the cabinet is going to go towards an electronic portal and done away with the paperwork and do away with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. But uh, more to the preparations that's taking place, I think what we actually had today for the two and a half hours, we examined the crime from both sides, and both the risks um, that this issue presents, both the health risks to the health of the nation and the economic risks as well. So we spent quite a bit of time on both sides of the coin and uh, seeking the assistance of the Cubans with respect to the, the new drug that, not the new drug, well, the drug that would actually assist in boosting the immune system is but a part of the help that we have uh, leveraged from our longstanding relationship with our neighbor and friends in Cuba. So yes, this is again a part of the preparation and uh, we continue on the side of prevention and management of this uh, outbreak or potential outbreak to look at the underlying processes and we try to improve upon them. The one thing that I would say here, Andy, is that the cabinet continues to stress that uh, we need to um, encourage everyone to operate with a sense of calm. Um, this is a movie that has been played out in several other countries before us, so we know the necessary steps that have to be taken. Um, I want to say here that uh, part of what's going to help is that if persons believe that they have a contribution to make to, to the discussion, um, the cabinet colleagues are, are pretty open towards uh, receiving um, input. Um, the side shows are not helping, Andy, to be honest. And um, we want to ensure that this is an all-inclusive 
um, arrangement. Last Friday, I had a meeting with a number of heads of media houses, including uh, the television station and radio stations. And we have agreed to a form of collaboration. We will be continuing those types of uh, discussions and collaboration um, as the week turns tomorrow. And you will hear more about it in the news. We are going to be able to share information. And the one thing that we want the public to be aware of is that uh, they should only rely on information that's coming from trusted sources. And so uh, what, we, what we're doing now with the Cuban Brigade that is going to arrive here very shortly, and the fact that within another few days, we would expect to be in a position where we can conduct uh, the testing in our laboratory here, um, I think we should be well positioned for um, a potential outbreak if it does happen. We would like it not to happen, but we're not in control of the spread um, insofar as if it is already in the population and it is being incubated. And that's the reason why it is important for persons to stay away from large crowds so that we do not have um, any rapid uh, spread of the, the virus. Um, one of the other aspects of the preparation we're doing as well is with respect to the, uh, the ventilators. And so we are equipping our infrastructure to be able to accommodate um, a much larger sample of persons that would need ventilators under the normal run of things. So we're putting all the preparations in place. Testing should be uh, achieved. Local testing should be achieved in, in short order. Um, we will have the arrival of the uh, Cuban Brigade with the assistance further of the, the, uh, the medicine that should uh, assist in boosting the immune system. And uh, as we continue to beef up the, the health resources, and uh, continue to uh, do the screening at the borders, both the marine borders and the, the air side border. Um, we think that we're in good stead. Okay, just one more question because we are fastly running out of time. The cabinet has also established a rapid response COVID-19 brigade. This is new for us here. Um, what will be the function of this brigade? Well, should there be um, any further outbreaks. The whole idea behind uh, the outbreaks, you, you would want to be in a position to, to do the tracking, to track how many persons have been in contact with persons who have been exposed or who have uh, been determined to have um, a contamination. So that rapid brigade is going to be required uh, to literally ensure that uh, the minimum amount of persons are exposed to an infection. And so they're going to have to comb the countryside. They're going to have to uh, be able to do the, the logistics, to be able to, to do the interrogation, to be able to determine how many persons have been in contact over a two or three day period and go out and then to bring those persons in so that they can be screened. And uh, we would, in that sense, be in the best position to flatten the curve as they speak. To you, and a strong feature of your government has been the post cabinet reporting. Um, it would be interesting to find out how that will be done if it is going to be done at all, Mr. Minister. Well, um, I believe there were some notes that were published after the meeting this morning, um, which we wrapped up uh, just around half, half past midday. And I believe uh, the traditional notes have uh, flowed from the pen of the, the chief of staff. So I think that the media community has already been fortified with the information uh, that we attempted to share, that we would be in the habit of sharing. Whether or not we will have a post-cabinet briefing tomorrow, or we will save it until beyond Wednesday's meeting, I think it's more safe to say that we will go to a Wednesday's meeting post cabinet. After Wednesday's, do it on Thursday morning. Okay, thank you so much for filling us in with all of those details. Looking forward to more as we continue to brace ourselves for COVID 19 here in Antigua and Barbuda. Minister of Telecommunications there, the Honorable Malford Nicholas, filling us in with some details following a cabinet meeting earlier today. Now to continue with this evening's newscast, this country's ambassador to Cuba is dispelling rumors that Antigua and Barbuda med students are being forced to put their lives at risk of being infected by COVID-19. Now Ambassador George Morris Goodwin is responding to several messages circulating on social media suggesting that the students are being forced to carry out surveys against their will. We were told that it was obligatory that these things must be done, the, the survey must be done, and that these medical students, those that are involved in, I think it's third, fourth year, 
And so we had registered our concerns about it. The CARICOM caucus of the 14 countries have written to Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Health, Public Health here, and we have gotten an approval that our students will not be required to go on this, what they call here in Cuba, pesquisa, which is the survey in the community. A Cuba has some 25 cases of COVID-19, and parents here in Antigua and Barbuda, according to reports, are growing concerned. But Ambassador Goodwin offers uh, this assurance this evening that the Cuban government is doing everything in its power to keep Antiguan and Barbudan students safe. Well, Cuba, you know, has a pretty good health system. And we have been given guaranteed that in the event that that happens, that our students will be taken absolutely good care of. Not that they'll be singled out for better treatment than anybody else. The health system caters for everybody. And once they are diagnosed as being positive, all care will be taken within the Cuban system. And Barbuda has been benefiting from the Cuban health system for decades. It's been sending its health workers throughout the region to support uh, the region's health systems. Now, Antigua and Barbuda will be receiving a group of doctors and nurses this week that will strengthen the country's abilities to fight against the spread of COVID-19. More updates now. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is already beginning to adjust its growth picture for the region as member territories continue to brace for the impact of the coronavirus. Deputy Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, Trevor Brathwaite, says, worst case, the region could experience a negative growth in the long term. We were projecting around 3%. We'll probably see a, a percentage point uh, 100 basis point shave off to about 200, two point something um, percent in GDP. And then uh, we did a, the medium is, is a further drop in GDP to about 1%. And then uh, if it goes on to the six month scenario, which is the worst case scenario, we will have what some people call negative growth. Now, he says it's not unpresented. As a matter of fact, it happened uh, post the 911, and the region was able to bounce back. Brathwaite says the effects are already being felt as some sectors have already moved to lay off their workers. As you know, that most of our, some of our countries are very tourism dependent. And so, if there are no flights coming in, no cruise lines coming in, then that effectively um, halts um, GDP growth in our countries. Now this, a major institution in government is putting in place its own measures to guard against the coronavirus. In a statement from the Accountant General, Dr. Cleopatra Githens, the Treasury has notified members of the public who may be displaying flu-like symptoms to stay at home. Instead, the Treasury is asking those persons to contact the ministry or department in government with which they do business. The number to call is 468-9100, that's at the Treasury, all the offices can be reached by email at treasury at ab.gov.ag. According to the statement, the public has also been advised that it is limiting the number of persons entering the building, which is located on St. Mary's Street, to three per service window. Remote solutions are also on standby to be activated should the risk increase. And finally, on the national segment of our newscast this evening, Today was not the same for many persons in the Christian community here in Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, the Antigua Christian Council made the decision last week to suspend regular Sunday services for its religious affiliates on the 22nd and 29th of March. ABS's Regiba Parisio has more on church activities this Sunday. On most Sundays, the sounds of the various church choirs joyously singing hymns can be heard across the islands. This Sunday, however, was rather different. In an effort to curtail the spread of COVID-19, the Antigua Christian Council made the decision to suspend regular church activities for its five affiliates on March 22nd and 29th. Those are Anglican, Methodist, Roman Catholic and Moravian churches, as well as the Salvation Army. We visited a number of churches only to meet closed doors and locked gates. Many left signs on their doors to indicate the reason for the closure. Some churches, however, were open with a downsized congregation. Eventually, 
we visited the Cedar Hall Moravian Church in Jennings, where sitting amongst its empty pews was Chairman of the Moravian Church East and West Indies Province, Reverend Algernon Lewis. He says in countries with a significant number of COVID-19 infections, transmission often occurred through churches. And so it was like the church was becoming part of the problem rather than part of the solution. As a people of God, we understand our responsibility. We act in faith, but we also act in wisdom. The church, he says, has opted to limit the number of persons present for services and stream them online. When the church will be able to hold regular services, he says, is still up in the air. These are different times. We, we have not been this way before. I've been saying that to the church. There's no playbook to determine how this is going to go. We, we have to go just listening to what God is saying to us and operating in wisdom. In the meantime, Reverend Lewis is reminding the public, the church is not simply the physical structure. It's the people who worship there. Church is really about building community. We want to build community in this COVID-19. Even though we can't touch one another physically, we still can connect with one another and share the love and share the, the concern. Don't stop giving. Don't stop calling. Don't be afraid to come by to the church. Don't stop singing and tuning in and just feel the connection. Anytime you feel distant, reach out. Call your pastor, call your elders. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Thank you, Rakeem. Great reporting there. Now, coming up next in sports, that's it for the local basketball season. It has been called off. Joel Rain is standing by with all the details. <laughs>